Hello, beautiful people. You're about to get a lot more beautiful because in today's video, I'm gonna give you five important points about collagen peptides that I really want you to know and understand before you ever purchase a product or put this stuff in your body. Collagen. It seems like it's everywhere now. I even see advertisements for it on the subway, but they're all using like 20 year old models. How does that help us when we're over 40 or even in our thirties and trying out this collagen peptide thing as a way to prevent the signs of aging? And that brings me to my first question for you. Why do you want to use collagen? Most of us cross the line because of vanity, because we look in the mirror and we say, oh my goodness, fine lines. We see a picture of ourselves smiling and feeling like our happiest self, but everything's all crinkled up right here or frowning and looking at our iPhones and everything's all wrinkly right here. Or like me, maybe you have kids who love to play with this part of your neck and make you feel like an old turkey. No mama, it feels really good. Stop it. That just makes me feel so self-conscious. So I used collagen peptides for two and a half years. Two of those years was in my coffee and I did see a difference. I saw this improve a lot. I saw the thickness of my skin improve a lot, but I found that when I moved it to an empty stomach at a different time of day, I saw even more improvements and I'm looking forward to more improvements over the years to come. But there's some things we need to know about collagen first. It is a category with a lot of myths. This is like, this is a category that I get really sort of uptight about. It's a category that I really want to get in front of you and explain to you what it all really means because the marketing is whack. It's just all over the place. So let's break it down. Point number one, it's not vegan. Collagen is absolutely positively from an animal, fish or mammals. So it could be fish, fish skins, fish bones, fish leftovers, or it's typically cow or chicken. Not very commonly in a health food store will you find pork collagen, but it is out there. And to be quite honest, in the studies, it's very effective. It is actually, in some studies that I've seen, more effective than fish peptides. I know, we don't really wanna believe that that's true, but the research showed, and it was in human subjects, not just mice. So we actually see that it works in people like us. So it could be a bone, broth that you make out of collagen from pigs or cows or lamb or goat or whatever it is that you had left over. Point number two, collagen peptides are not the same as bone broth. So let's break that down. If you're at home and you just ate Sunday chicken and you have the chicken carcass left over and you put it in a pot, some apple cider vinegar, some herbs and spices, and you cook that down slowly for 12 to 24 hours, you're making a bone broth. You throw in beef bones, you throw in lamb bones, you throw in pig, that's very common in a lot of countries, fish, leftover fish, the bones and the heads and the eyes and all of that stuff, organ meats, this is bone broth. This is the way that traditionally all over the world people use the whole animal. They don't waste anything. We didn't used to have the ability to walk down to the store and just buy you know, a tray of chicken breasts or a tray of chicken legs with the skin already taken off of them. We had to know how to take apart the whole animal, use the whole animal. And if you're a vegan and you're listening to this now, you're probably starting to get really grossed out about right now that you realize what collagen really is. It's all those leftover nasty bits as Anthony Bourdain was always prone to say. And he loved to go all over the world and eat food in cultures that knew how to cook those up in a really good way. And when you travel the world and you see like particularly in Asian and Southeast Asian cultures, the texture of people's skins. Yes, there's genetics at play, but they're using this leftover stuff in their food all the time. And it plays a role over the long term, not just in how we look, but how we feel inside in our joints, the quality and um, efficacy of the lining of our blood vessels, even our heart valves, their intervertebral discs, plays a role in so many areas, even the cornea, the clear, covering over your eyeball is a type of collagen. So point number three, just eating collagen doesn't make collagen. So in other words, you can't just eat 
chicken joints, chicken cartilage, and expect it to go and make cartilage in your joints. You can't just eat the skin of chicken, the skin of cows, the skin of fish, and expect it to make your skin thicker and more moist. Your body has to actually digest, completely break down all of those components into little tiny parts, absorb it into the bloodstream, distribute it to different tissues, and then put it back together again for which it needs a carpenter. And the carpenter is enzymes, and enzymes need things like vitamin C, they need minerals and trace minerals like silica, they need B vitamins like biotin, and they just need to be functioning well. And aging is really kind of that point when our enzymes just don't function as well as they used to function. So bone broth, because it's whole proteins of collagen still actually has to be completely digested by you and broken down for you to even get the amino acid peptides into your bloodstream. So really, when we're talking about quickly making a difference in how we look or how we feel on the inside, the peptides are the most efficacious. And that's been pretty well demonstrated in research. Don't throw out the bone broth though, because the bone broth itself is such an important immune building, uh, inflammatory modulating food, and they each have a role and you can use both of them in your daily life. Point number four, the type of collagen doesn't really matter. Are you confused because you're out there and you see type one and three collagen for your skin, hair, and nails, type two collagen for your joints, and multi-collagens was type one, two, three, five, seven, nine, ten. It's like, what do I need? Do I need to take pig and eggshell and, and beef and chicken and fish all in one product? Does that make it better? No. And that's what I really want you to understand. It doesn't make it better. That would be like having a plate with sausage in casings and chicken legs and breasts with skin on them and a bunch of fish and then some steak with gristle and some bone marrow all on one plate. And you know what they call that in Dallas? The trough. That is just not a normal way of eating. It's not really a healthy thing to do. We don't typically eat like that. So picking a product that you like, whether it is from cow or chicken or pig or fish or eggshell, just find a product that you like. And we'll talk about sourcing in videos that are coming up, but pick the product that works for you. It doesn't really matter what type because all of those types of collagen are high in particular amino acids and those are what we're after. They're high in an amino acid called glycine, one called proline, a converted amino acid from proline called hydroxyproline and that conversion takes vitamin C. So you can't be vitamin C deficient and then alanine and some other minor amino, minor amino acids. Collagen and bone broth and gelatin and collagen peptides are all high in those amino acids. The more concentrated and refined, the higher in those amino acids. So the peptides tend to be highest and they are the most absorbable. They're broken down already. They're pre-digested. All they have to do with the lining of your gut is get cut into a few pieces and they absorb in the bloodstream and can be lumber dumped on your front yard so that you can build a beautiful new house, which is your joints, your ligaments, your tendons, your blood vessels, and your skin and hair and nails. Point number five, why do we want all of these leftover peptides in our bodies anyway? Why do we do this? What is the point? And I already alluded to this. Traditional diets include these parts in their food every single day. We in the United States, even Canada, not as much Canada, but definitely in the United States tend to throw that stuff away. We want just some nice lean chicken breasts. We want a lean cut of steak filet mignon. We want the filet of fish. We don't want to debone it ourselves and eat the cheeks and the eyes. And again, if you're vegan, I'm grossing you out right now, but this is what people do all over the world and have done for a really long time. So the primal paleo ancestral movement kind of brought collagen back into the fold because we're missing a whole part of the animal. We're missing nutrients when we throw away the carcass, when we throw away the skin, when we throw away the bones, when we throw away the organs even, we're missing nutrients. And people who actually are meat eaters and don't eat those parts of the animal need collagen more than those of you who are vegetarians and vegans. Surprise, surprise. 
So if you're a vegan and you're getting your proteins from your combinations of legumes and grains and nuts and seeds and some of the vegetables that you eat, if you have really good digestion and you have really good vitamin C status, B vitamin status and trace mineral status, you may be doing okay. If you're vegetarian and it's kind of a mix, if you're a bagel and almond cream cheese eating vegetarian or vegan, then you're out of luck because you're not getting the nutrients that you need. If you're an omnivore and you do eat meat and you don't eat all of those nasty bits, then collagen can really be an important product for you. And the more meat you eat, like say you're a power lifter or a sprinter, the more collagen you need to compensate for the lack of glycine and the excess of methionine that is in the muscle meats or the lean meats that you eat. So it balances out the equation, but marketing, 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 what gets us to buy a product faster than anything else? Weight loss and beauty. So vanity, really, we, it all comes down to vanity. That's answer number one as to why most people buy a collagen peptide product. Honestly, I'm over 40. That's what made me cross the line. I'm a whole food eater. I love to eat the food. I'm a foodie. I take pictures of food if I haven't eaten it first. I love food, but vanity and saying, what could I do inside of my body that will change how I age on the outside made me step across that line to a product that's pretty refined, but in that sense, pretty pure and also very digestible and absorbable and usable by your body. I've seen it make a difference in two and a half years. Now that I've changed where I take it, which is on an empty stomach instead of in coffee, instead of with food, instead of in protein shakes, just collagen peptides in water on an empty stomach, I've already seen more differences and I expect to see more in the years to come. So those are your five points that you need to know before you endeavor to purchase a collagen peptide product or put that stuff in your body. In the next video, we're going to talk about sourcing and my top picks, vital picks for collagen products and why. Thank you so much for listening to this video. It's so important to me that you understand where your food comes from and especially when it's in a supplement form, that information is typically hidden from us. So I really appreciate you tuning in. If you like this video, please say so by clicking like, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, please do so. If you have an experience with collagen that you want to share, do leave it in the comments below. If you have questions, something I didn't cover, leave it in the comments below and I'll try to get back to it as soon as possible. Stay beautiful, live long, live strong, and be sure to make a difference.